All right, what's going on, everybody? Haven't done a video in a while. Uh, definitely trying to get back to it. This is really not as easy as it seems, right? So much stuff to do around here on a regular basis. But anyway, I wanted to do a uh, quick video on um, sorting or sifting, maintaining, basically, uh, roach bins. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through uh, my dubia colony, and I'll actually be sifting out different size dubias to separate them and grow them up. And then also cleaning the bins and uh, just basically allowing you guys to see, you know, the process that I use, how I do it, and uh, how simple and easy it is. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, so this is my standard uh, size roach colony. And this is for dubia. Uh, I would say I have more dubia than anything. But I, I have about 14 different species of roaches here that I keep in total. Everything from hissing roaches to orange heads, death heads, uh, Peruvian cave roaches, uh, giant peppered roaches, uh, and discoids, pallet roaches, all different types of roaches for different types of purposes. Some are pets, some are feeders, uh, some are feeders for large dragons, and some are feeders for smaller dragons, like, for example, the pallet roaches. Um, but anyway, this video, like I said, will just really be about sifting and maintaining and sorting your roach bin. And this can be used for different species of roach, but I'm going to be using dubia roaches for this example because that's who I need to sort right now. Um, currently, <clears throat> this co this colony is my only real producing colony of dubia roaches. I have so many dragons that it's, it's really hard for me to uh, get my dubia colonies or my roach colonies up in size. It seems like every time I produce some roaches, I got to feed those roaches off. If you have dragons in a roach colony, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They will eat as many roaches as you have, no matter how many roaches you have. But anyway, long story short, what I plan to do is sift these roaches, <clears throat> basically get the different sizes of roaches out of this bin here and uh, grow all the roaches up. What I'll be doing over the next few weeks is I'll actually be doing a lot of downsizing of dragons and a few other reptiles. So that way I can become a little more focused with the business. I kind of want to reinvent the business and get back to the things that really made me fall in love with doing it in the first place, which can kind of be hard to do when you're literally caring for hundreds of dragons on a daily basis. OK, so I have my assistant, as always, with me. There you go. That's Demi Cherie, the Pagona princess. And that's her assistant. His name is Puff. I'm puppy. Puff, Puff the puppy. He is her new shih tzu, okay? Behind her, you can see I have some dragons. And then on top of those, those are bins. All those bins are roach colonies. I also have them here. I also have them over here. I also have them over here. I also have them over here. And this is just one of our reptile rooms. Like I said, I, I've been wanting to show you guys in a complete tour of the reptile room, which I'll probably do over this next week. Make a video that just gives you a quick and complete that does a quick, uh, a complete and quick tour of the reptile room. Um, but like I said, this is one of the reptile rooms. Got to do some intensive cleaning today, and then over there, as you can see, there's another reptile room. But like I said, the focus of this video is going to be sorting these dubia. Okay, so like I said, this is our standard dubia colony right here, and um, we're, we're, our goal is to get out the different sizes of dubia and then, of course, clean the bin, give everybody a fresh start. And the smaller dubia, we're going to go ahead and separate them and use those to start another colony. Okay, now I'll do a detailed video on how to care for your roaches, how to set up your own colony, etc., so forth and so on. Okay, a respirator is definitely something you want to have if you're going to be cleaning and sifting and sorting and dealing with your roaches. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Little respirator mask all right um, okay so this is the inside of the bin and like I said this is the top it's just a uh, plastic tote that I've cut a big hole in the top and added screen mesh with hot glue as you can see for ventilation okay um, now like I said in this I'm keeping dubia roaches so I don't really have to worry about them climbing out or escaping because they're too heavy uh, to to climb smooth structures, all right? Don't have to worry about them climbing these smooth structures. They're not going to escape <clears throat> because of the height of the bin and the smooth sides of the bin. I don't have to add tape or silicone or any of that stuff, but I do do that with some of my other species of roaches because they can escape, 
okay? But like I said, this video is, is specifically tailored to dubia, but you can use the sorting and sifting process I'm going to be showing you guys for just about any species of roach, all right? Now, just want to show you guys some of the uh, roaches in here before we sift. I will show you guys at the end of it all how many roaches, you know, how many small roaches we end up separating from this bin right here. In here, I would say I have a about several hundred females and about a fourth of that in males. The ratio that you want to have when breeding roaches is about one to four. I personally don't mind doing one to five depending upon the species of roach because what I've noticed is some roaches, the, uh, the males are a little more aggressive and of course will eat the young. All right. So yeah, like I said, just showing you guys some of the uh, roaches that are in here. And like I said, these are dubia roaches. The roaches that you see that don't have wings, the larger, the large ones without wings, those are the females. And the roaches that do have wings are the males, okay? So that's one of the beauties of dealing with dubia roaches is they're sexually dimorphic, meaning that there is a physical difference in appearance between genders, um, which makes them very, very easy to sort, sift, and separate. And as you can hear, the dragons are starting to get excited because they see me going through this bin. They go crazy when they start seeing roaches. I would definitely say that roaches, especially dubia roaches, like I said, we'll try to keep this specific to dubia roaches, but I, I'm talking in general because, like I said, I keep multiple species of roach. Roaches are, are bearded dragons... Uh, favorite food I say and I definitely would say they're one of the best feeders that you can offer your bearded dragon okay the uh, staple feeders that we feed here to our bearded dragons are dubia roaches and other roaches as well as uh, black soldier fly larvae which are very very high in calcium super worms which can be a little higher in fat but I actually like that because I like to see a nice round belly on my dragons and they're uh, probably the least expensive feeder you can deal with and occasionally crickets which is pretty much similar to uh, superworms in price, but don't seem to last as long. And, of course, have the uh, lowest nutritional value out of the four feeders that I just named, okay? And that's why we feed those only occasionally. Plus, I don't like the smell. I don't like the noise they make, etc. But anyway, so, yeah, these are dubia roaches. All of those small roaches you see, those are nymphs. So, nymphs will refer to any non-sexually mature uh, roach. And to clarify that again, a nymph would be any roach that is not an adult, okay? So the adult roaches, like I said, the females, they don't have wings like that girl right there. And the males, they do have wings like that guy right there. That's your male. That's your female. And, of course, keeping in mind, I'm letting you know that because, like I said, if you're going to start your own dubia colony, one of the biggest things you want to pay attention to to successfully breed <clears throat> your roaches <clears throat> is maintaining a proper uh, male-to-female ratio. You can get away with one to three. You can get away with one to two. You definitely don't want to do one to one. Me personally, I prefer one to four or one to five. And I mean, I'll throw a couple extra males in there. Let's just say if I have 300 females in here, you know what I mean? I, I, I'd like to have uh, no more than 100, maybe 125 males. You know what I mean? But that's just me personally. And like I said, it's several hundred adults in here. And as you can see, they've been working quite hard to uh, get their numbers up. Breeding roaches is very easy. Uh, when I go to shows, and you know, I, when I deal with new bearded dragon owners, a lot of them uh, have their uh, predispositions to uh, have their predispositions to. You can go ahead and walk around a little bit. Just keep your eye on them, boo. A lot of them have their predispositions to uh, roaches because it's just the, the, the word roaches. But let me tell you a little bit about uh, Doobie Roaches. And like I said, this is, isn't supposed to be a detailed care video, but I can't help but, uh, you know, share a little information with you guys. So the Doobie Roaches are from uh, South America. I believe, yeah, I believe it's South America, Central and South America. And uh, the thing about Doobie Roaches is that dubia roaches cannot reproduce in your home unless you have a very, very high humidity and very, very high temperatures, okay? They need pretty much ideal, uh, an, an, an ideal environment 
in order to be able to reproduce. So that's 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 first off the best thing about starting your own doobie economy. A lot of people are like, oh my god, I don't want to deal with roaches. Oh my god, you know. Trust me, I've had my fair share of experiences with roaches. Okay, you know what I mean. I've, I've come a long way to get where I'm at. You know, and I've been in in a few living situations where I've had roaches in my cereal box and roaches in my refrigerator. I, I've had a few situations where roaches is the only thing in my refrigerator, all right? But <clears throat> anyway, long story short, like I said, these aren't American or German cockroaches. These aren't the type of roaches that are going to escape, get loose, and infest in your home and be all in your walls and bring down your property value and piss off your neighbors and gross you out when you sleep, and, 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 you know? So these, <laughs> this, is a, this is an exotic roach, all right? And like I said, this nutritionally is probably one of the best feeders you can offer your bearded dragon and really a lot of other reptiles such as leopard geckos, um, I believe certain skinks, uh, what else could you could get away with, uh, frill dragons, tegus, um, monitors, you know what I mean? Dubia roaches, is, uh, Dubia roaches specifically is what I would say is probably my favorite feeder roach, period. Um, they don't really produce any odor. They can have a slight smell to them, but it's very slight. Um, and uh, <clears throat> they reproduce prolifically. I mean, they reproduce like roaches. And the, as far as starting your own colony, outside of creating the bin and providing them with the ideal t uh, environment, there's really no work aside from keeping them fed. And if you guys have been watching my videos, you know I'm a big endorser of the Rapeshi bug burger which makes my life so much easier because not only does it feed them but it keeps them hydrated and uh, we offer that in our online store i'll be sure to include a link in the bio i mean in the description of this video yes i am ruthless with the plug just had to plug that product right quick but anyway right here what you're looking at these are polymer gel crystals this is basically their source of water now like i said i use the Rapeshi bug burger you don't see it in here right now because they literally destroy it but um <laughs> This right here, I don't really keep this in here to so much to keep them hydrated as I keep as I keep this in here to provide humidity. Now, generally, you'd want to have a heat mat. The heat mat would be on here, and the heat would you know produce humidity when combined with water or these polymer gel crystals. The reason you're using polymer gel water crystals is because you can't have uh, flowing or or still standing water in here because your roaches will of course drown. They are not able to swim, so this allows them to be able to eat it, ingest it, and get hydrated. But like I said, I also keep bug burger in here. And I also offer them fresh fruit, which also is another form of hydration and sustenance, okay? But anyway, yeah, like I said, this isn't a uh, care video on uh, Doobie Roaches. This is supposed to be a simple showing you how to sift. But like I said, I just wanted to give you a little information on Doobie Roaches. I know a lot of you new bearded dragon owners are thinking or have, have had some kind of encounter with Doobie Roaches. And for a lot of people, it's like taboo. It's like, I'm not bringing roaches in my home. But in comparing these to crickets, this is definitely the better feeder. One dubia roach is nutritionally equivalent to about seven crickets. And crickets are m mainly exoskeletons. So you're filling your dragon up on like McDonald's when you're giving your dragons crickets. Unless you uh, properly gut load your crickets. There's a new product that I'm dealing with. It's actually called, uh, I think it's called like, uh, I can't think of the name of it. So I won't plug that one in this video. But uh there's a, or maybe I will, maybe later I'll go back and edit it and then show you a picture of the product. But it's this product that Rapeshi has that like is specifically designed to increase the uh, nutritional value of crickets, which I really love. There's lizards and reptiles down here, not mammals. You and your mammal, get your lives together. Go get them, go get your mammal. Go get them. I'm trying to get Yeah. Anyway. She just got she just got the dog. I just bought her the dog uh, this week, so they're like best friends now. Like I said, that's Puff, the Shih Tzu, and uh, yeah, he's a good guy. He's real cool. He is a Shih Tzu baby. That's what that's what his that's what he's called. Like Zulu is a cane corso. He's a Shih Tzu. That's his breed of dog. Okay, I'm not I'm not insulting him. No, he's a baby Shih Tzu. Zulu's a cane corso. They don't look the same, right? See how much hair he has? Anyway, look, I'm trying to make a roach video. You're distracting me. You are distracting me. Arf, arf. Yeah, arf, arf. But anyway, like I said, so these are the roaches that I have inside of the bin now, just to give you guys an idea of what we're looking at sorting here. We got quite a few roaches in this colony. This is a big colony. 
Now I will say, you know, you wanna you don't wanna really like overstuff your colony. That's kinda one of the problems I have with this colony right here. I could probably break this colony down into two smaller colonies. Because what happens is if the roaches become overcrowded, they can uh, let off like this fluid, which when it gets on each on each other, it kind of uh, kills them. It makes them sick and then they slowly die off. I believe they do this to make space. But anyway, like I said, this isn't a Doobie Roach Care video. This is just going to be a quick and fun little sifting video. I'm going to show you people who already have uh, existing or are just starting your own Doobie Colonies. How to sift and sort your roaches by size as well as clean your bin, okay? I will later on do a detailed roach care video for you guys, and I'll show you guys the multiple species of roaches that we keep down here, okay? But in the meantime, and in between time, like I said, this is just to help you sort, sift, and maintain your existing or newly started Dubia roach colony. All right? All right. So I'm going to try to shut up a little bit and, and, and get to the point, but, you know, bear with me, guys. You know, I'm just... Just just trying to give you all the information I got without giving you all the information I got. I know everybody wants to listen to this all day long. Anyway, all right, so next I'm going to show you what I use to sort and sift the roach colony, okay? Now, I know for a lot of you, you probably won't be able to get your hands on this type of technology that I'm about to show you, and that's okay. If you can't, then improvise. I won't lie to you. The, the technology that I use is the most cutting edge. It's the newest it is the most elite and, I mean, efficient piece of technology I could possibly buy. It's like the best one you could buy. You know what I mean? I spent hundreds and hundreds, if not even thousands. of pennies on this here tool okay and what this is is a stack of five dollar i mean five gallon paint buckets and you can get these i got these from lowe's i literally have hundreds of these though because i uh sell flowers on the side yes yes i do sell flowers i am that guy who you'll see in the middle of the road like flowers 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 ten dollars five dollars twenty dollars that's me yes i have a family to feed judge me if you want to anyway these are five gallon paint buckets. And as you can see, there's multiple buckets here. We got what? One, two, three, four, five buckets. Ah, see my boy over there counting. That's my assistant over there. Demi Cherie, the beautiful Pagona princess. Yes. And this looks like a kid mask. It's not a kid mask, but I will let you put it on in a second, okay? I think that's your Uncle Keith's mask. I'm going to get you another mask. We got to wipe it out with some Lysol and stuff. Make sure it's clean and fresh. Okay, so anyway... This is the five-gallon paint bucket, and you can buy each one of these buckets for about $3.75, $3.50, at the most $5. Like I said, I got these from Lowe's. You can get them from Home Depot. You can find them at the dollar store. There's all kinds of places you can find them, but this is just a five-gallon paint bucket, okay? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take each bucket, and you're going to drill holes in the bottom according to the size of the roaches that you want to sift, so, <clears throat> boom, as you can see, I have these holes right here, and I can't even remember off the top of my head what the size these are, these holes are. Like I said, this isn't going to be a detailed video on uh, roach care. This is just going to be a quick video on sifting. I will do a whole series for you guys on setting up a dubia colony, caring for your dubia colony, or roach colony, not just dubia, but your roach colony, showing you different species of roaches, what serve purposes they can serve, and how to set up your sifting set like I have here. But like I guess I'm just giving you a general idea. You can easily just buy you a drill bit set and a power drill from Lowe's. 
and on that set it will give you the different drill bit sizes and you can make your holes according to size now these are all the same size hole hold on baby how can i help you what's up i want to drill holes in there i've already drilled holes okay i need you to keep an eye on the dog the dog is running wild Anyway, okay, so the first bucket will be your biggest holes, okay? Your second bucket will be slightly smaller holes, okay? Like I said, I don't remember all the time my head what size holes I did. I will go back. Yeah, that's okay, baby. It's, it's going to be bugs everywhere. It's a little loose roach from out of one of the buckets that I didn't get when I said Um, Yeah, and excuse the mess, guys. If you don't know about bearded dragons, you could clean them right now. And then they'll take a poop two minutes later. I have a few hatchlings. I'm actually going to be cleaning these guys' bins today. And we'll be getting ready to go to a show tomorrow. It's going to be a three-day show, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I mean, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But we got to load in today. And that's in Chantilly slash Dulles, Virginia. The Pet Expo by Repticon. I love this expo because it's like a smaller expo. But the, the clientele is quality. And the people that come are generally knowing what they're talking about. Or you get those people who don't know anything about it and are just genuinely interested because they're coming over from the dog and cat part. Anyway, so each bucket you go down is going to get smaller. The holes are going to get smaller and smaller. So eventually you get to the point where you have these tiny holes. Then you got these small holes. And then you have at the very bottom a bucket with no holes. Okay? And this is, of course, going to be to catch all the frazz. Fraz will be referring to Fraz will be referring to the uh, roach poop, as well as the other uh, garbage that might have found its way into the colony. Pieces of discarded fruit, whatever. All right. All right. So basically, what happens is you start to knock your roaches into these into this top bucket here. And the smaller roaches will continue to fall through until they get into the point where they can no longer go through the hole because it's too small, okay? Your biggest, ro your bigger roaches will, of course, stay at the top, and that's how you're going to separate it. I'm going to actually show you guys me doing this, and I'm going to show you guys again the end result of doing this, okay? 